Okay, so. Shit. And maybe I'll just go over the whole thing that I've done so far. Basically, I started with a coat of Total Boat over the whole entire thing to give a nice, like, candy shell. Um, after that, I basically block sanded down to, like, almost spots where that were completely foam. Um, then I used very much thinner epoxy from eBay that was, you know, relatively cheaper so I could just start slathering on there. Sometimes I would put microbeads in there, sometimes I wouldn't, depending on how deep the gouges were. Um, so now I'm on, like, I think layer four or five, block sand three. So... Getting really close to the actual shape of the bike. Um, right now, I've just put on the last one to kind of fill in some of the holes that I've been finding after sanding and some of the dings that happen from just walking around it. Um, so hopefully, this will dry and I'll be able to do one more final block sand and then start putting carbon fiber on it. Um, so I'm super excited about that. I got a couple more things I gotta do in the back and I'll explain that over there. Okay, so here's the back of my bike. Um, this is where the parachute tubes are supposed to come out. And when I designed it, it was all based on CAD. Um, and in reality, I went to the store, couldn't find the tubes that were the right size, and ended up getting some a little bigger. So I need to add some additional material across here to, to pump this up a little bit, and then down here as well to pump this up. About a half an inch on top and bottom. Okay, so I've hot glued some wooden dowels into this kind of like shape. There's some surface imperfections here, and you can see it in the reflections, but this is the inside of the mold, so the epoxy will fill most of that. The parts I'm most concerned about are the seams, and the seams are doing really well. I've been filling them in with um, cabasil and epoxy, and basically block sanding them to get them seamless. Um, but there's still a little bit more I have to do um, for block sanding, but I think we're pretty close. Right now the dowels are sticking up a little bit, so I'm gonna use the plane just to smooth them out and get them a little bit lower so when I put the body filler on, I don't have to sand off the top of those. I'm not a bodywork guy, and I've never done this before, so this is my first time, but I've watched a lot of YouTube, and the logic here is I'm spraying over some spray paint to put down a guide coat. Then I'm gonna take this long block, and I'm gonna sand this out until I get all of the dark spots and low spots, and then have feathered in. The sanded spots will actually give me a guide on where to apply more Bondo, so that way I can raise it up and then sand it back down. This is a tedious process and I'll go through this four or five times until I get just the perfect shape that I want. And I told I'm so tired I give up. I've been sanding for a long time and I got the buck all sanded up. Um, at this point, I went ahead and washed it with soapy water and there's almost no dust on it. And I'm gonna start applying wax to the buck. I've mopped everything, I've got everything cleaned up. So we should be good to go. We're gonna do three layers of wax. Um, after that, we're gonna spray some PVA on there and then we should be ready later this week to run the first layer of carbon fiber. So we're just gonna keep trucking ahead. For wax, I'm using this part all paste wax. chunk of this. Oh man. Two 
two layers of the wax in right now. I'm gonna let it sit overnight, buff it, one more, then I'm gonna spray PVA. Okay, so the time has come. I've actually put PVA over the whole thing. I've set up my carbon fiber on a string across the whole entire trailer so I can push them across as I work. I've changed my strategy a little bit. I'm actually gonna take some strips and I'm gonna run them down the top and the bottom. It's kind of like a landing point for the pieces. I'm gonna do them one side at a time. I've been noticing that on the stand with the corn dog, it actually flexes a little bit in the middle. So I'm gonna turn it up on its side and then I'm gonna shin it so it's completely flat. And then I'm gonna do one side so gravity helps it pull it into those lows and the convex points so I don't have any lifting. And then I'm gonna flip it over once that cures, do the other side, still sticking with the shingling. But yeah, we're moving forward and this is the first cuts of carbon fiber. Okay, so today's the day. We're actually gonna lay the first layer of carbon. Craig's here, he owes me some work. Thank you, Craig. So we're gonna do one layer first and just get an idea of how the schedule's gonna go of laying stuff. So yeah, let's get to it. Bring it over here now. It's going, it's leaving. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, man. So for the most part, this all turned out really, really good. I got a couple areas like around this here where I gotta sand them over. There's a couple extra layers. But I do have one spot where it lifted. And you can see it's not entirely attached to the foam. So called my buddy, told me to cut this out and lay a patch in there. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Let me use this guy. I got a mask on and hopefully I don't mess things up too much. I can use this grid pattern to kind of give me an idea of how far I have to go. Like this line to this line. 
to this line and across there. So it should be nice and gentle. Okay, we got everything all cut up. I'm gonna shove something under here, try and peel it up. And I guess we'll figure out how good my release agent works. Ooh, that good. Yep, in a pocket. Just didn't sit. So I'm gonna cut a patch, two layers about the size, lay it in there and fill it on up. All I'm gonna rough up these edges a tiny bit, but I'm gonna not overlap. I'm gonna fill it right into this edge. It was the first two layers, so you'll never see this, but I need to get this nice and flat so none of this stuff shows through. So after I'm done with this, I'm gonna end up taking the DA sander and just getting some of these high points. I think these are just local disruptions. The overall shape is still really good. Just need to get rid of some of this stuff. This is left over from the peel ply. Um, I think it was too cold out and I kind of bought the shitty peel ply, I guess. This stuff doesn't absorb as well. So, oh well, more work on the far end. <laughs> Let's do it. So today was a long day. Actually got the first skin on the entire buck. Super excited, I was crazy stressed out about it. Turned out really good. Actually we were pushing the limits as far as time. It got a little warm and still started to pop off before we got some of the peel ply down, but we made it work. So now I have a generalized schedule of how all these layups are gonna go and I think it should be clear sailing from here. One of the things that I'm not doing is I'm not doing the nose cone right now because I have a piece of tube coming out the front. And that's basically gonna be so that once I pull the tube out, I can go ahead and do the nose cone separately, which is gonna be kind of like pie slices and everything. But from here, I've basically 120 sanded um, the peel ply finish, which some of these seams came out a little rough. So I went ahead and did a 120. Um, I've wiped it all down and now I've cut all my sheets and they're ready and prepped. I just got done block sanding for a couple hours. And it's cold outside, but I'm sweating. Um, I was hoping that I wouldn't have to block sand too much between layer layups. Um, and this is the first layer, which is 50% overlap, which gives you officially two layers in one setup. I'm sure I've told you that a thousand times. Um, but we had some problems with the surface finish. And you can see like there's these wavy lines here. Um, obviously the seams are sticking up and I, that's what I anticipated having the sand was the seams and the peel ply layers. But I think what happened is this peel ply that I bought didn't let the epoxy wick through. It just kind of smushed it down, creating air bubbles that I couldn't get out and didn't really, it wasn't absorbent as I thought. So maybe this is an RTM, resin transfer method, uh, peel ply takes more pressure. But I think for now, I'm gonna go back to my old trusty like white peel ply that I have and I'm gonna use that. So the next step is I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the, the rest of this peel ply for the core mat, which I don't think is as important for a surface finish. It'll give me a good bonding surface. It'll let me move forward and uh, I can just kind of block sand that as well, but it won't be as important. So, and then I'm gonna wait for the last two layers for the good peel ply to show up because that's my finished product right there. I'm gonna have to block sand it a little bit I'm gonna peel ply it and then I'll probably do a final layer coat over the top of that. But yeah, it kind of sucks. I had to do a lot more work, had to fare some stuff in. I had a couple of other spots in the corners where I, it was a little bit of lifting, so I just sanded them out. 
I'm gonna fill that up with some cabasil. I'm gonna go over some of these seams that are low, fill those up with cabasil, and just block sand those back out. So, uh, this is way more, well, this is about how much I thought it was. I think I'm gonna end this video here. Um, this is a super long process and I gotta get some videos out. I'm getting no traction on this channel, so please throw me a like. I can only get so many videos out in so much time with this project, so it really helps if you guys go in there and like and subscribe if you're not subscribed. Um, but yeah, appreciate you guys watching. I am gonna be absolutely finished with this in the next video and we're gonna have it out of the trailer sitting next to the bike, ready to be cut up, so. This is a lot of work. Almost done. I'm gonna get so drunk when I'm done with this. <laughs> oh, fuck. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy.